So I got a lot of videos of Klapa Gading that I want to quickly use and experiment a new video style on. So this line is short at just 5.8 kilometers and consisting of 6 stations. The whole line is fully elevated and only goes through two of Jakarta's districts, being Klapa Gading and Pulau Gadung. Trains are short, using two car trains from Hyundai Rotem. Service is every 10 minutes flat from 5.30 am to 11 pm every day. When it comes to speed, my GPS speedometer says a top speed of 65 km per hour, meanwhile Wikipedia says 80, and LRT Jakarta's website as of writing the script in early July says 90 is the maximum top speed, though average speed is 50 km per hour. The LRT runs on standard gauge track, noteworthy considering most of Indonesia's rail network is narrow gauge. Also noteworthy is the 750 volts DC third rail electrification, considering that the MRT and commuter line uses 1500 volts DC overhead wire. Anyway, I've been on the section of line from Velodrome to Boulevard Utara and I have used Velodrome, Pulau Mas, Boulevard Selatan and Utara stations. Starting with Velodrome station, it is directly connected via a skybridge to Pemuda Rawamangun BRT shelter, serving lines 4 and 4D to Duku Atas and Kuningan. The 4C and 4K also stops in a regular bus stop going to Senayan and Block M. But really, in most cases, do not use Corridor 4 because congestion is apocalyptic here, especially near Manggarai due to the LRT extension that we will talk about later. The Jack 26 Angkot also stops nearby, connecting this place to Klender Station serving the Chikarang line. Arion Mall is across the street and about 600 meters away is Rawamangun Terminal that has buses to Bogor. I've never used that bus but I have seen it so most likely it is operational. The station's name also comes from the Jakarta International Velodrome, located right next to the station. I should also add that since trains run on third rail, when leaving Velodrome, which is the terminus station, and the train switch tracks, that causes the train to momentarily lose power, like zero acceleration and the AC turns off for a couple of seconds. Selamat datang dan terima kasih telah menggunakan LRT Jakarta. Kereta ini tujuan stasiun Pegangsaan 2 S01. Stasiun berikutnya Equestrian S05. Not a problem but it may cause some concern for first time users. Moving to Equestrian Station, named after the Jakarta International Equestrian Park right next to it, there's micro trans lines to the surrounding neighborhoods and that's it. There's also a hospital right next to the station. Next is Pulau Mas Station, just 800 meters away from Equestrian or an 11 minute walk away. Transfer here to Pulau Mas BRT Shelter, serving Transjakarta Corridor 2 and Line 2A. No skybridge here but you do get a very nice and wide sidewalk. In most cases, it's better to just use Corridor 2 to get to the LRT since that corridor's bus lanes is still intact, excluding the mess between Senen and Juanda. Nearby is Pela Terra Mall. Now crossing to Kelapa Gading, we have Boulevard Selatan. The only transit here is the Jak 59 Angkot, and only the ones going north serves this LRT station. Nearby is Wisma Gading Permai Apartments and the Kelapa Gading Club. One of the good things about the LRT is that you do not need to navigate this absolute horror that is Kelapa Gading Roundabout. Also, I question whether building a highway right in the middle of a residential area is a good idea, considering it just creates a horrific bottleneck and congestion hotspot in front of Mall of Indonesia. Next is Boulevard Utara. Transfer here to a bunch of micro trans lines, the 12P to Jakarta International Stadium, and the airport bus to Soekarno Hatta. Nearby is Mall Kelapa Gading, basically everyone gets off at this station. There's also park and ride facilities here. Also, should I be concerned by the fact that they had to paint these water level markers? Last is Pegangsaan 2 LRT station, the northern terminus as well as a depot of this line. This place is also the terminus of the 12P. Some say that this line is useless. To that I say, try finding a parking spot in MKG on a Saturday evening. The LRT provides much needed circumferential service connecting Jakarta's largest mall with Transjakarta corridors 2 and 4. Plus, do you really want to wait for the once every 20 to 35 minutes 12P and get stuck in front of Moy? The LRT is not the fastest or the most frequent service in Jakarta but it is reliable, no random 20 to 30 minutes gaps between vehicles like in say Transjakarta or the KRL commuter line. Plus points for high population density throughout the line, 
Also, this line is being extended to Mangarai, hopefully done by the end of 2026. There is also a proposed extension to Klender, Halim, Kis, and Rajawali. Some have also proposed a loop, going as far west as Kedoya and as far north as Pig. Personally, I propose extending this line further south until Pondok Gede, before then turning west, connecting to Pinang Ranti Terminal, and finally to Taman Mini LRT Station. Maybe even an extension to Pasar Rubo. Giving this line connections to LRT Cibubur Line, Transjakarta Corridor 7 and 9, and MRT Phase 4. Now for the extension that is currently being built. It is 6.4 kilometers long and consists of 5 stations, basically following the path of Transjakarta Corridor 4 and crossing the paths of corridors 10 and 5. Mataraman LRT station is very close to the Mentes Minting Square Apartments. Let's hope they connect the two up with the Sky Bridge. Where things get interesting is Manggarai Station, directly connecting this line to the Greater Jakarta Rail Network and also requiring some very tall pillars, providing even more great views of Jakarta. The Sky Bridge connecting Manggarai Commuter Line Station and Manggarai LRT Station is 300 meters long, though I have a feeling that the walk from platform to platform might exceed 500. So, after using this line multiple times, do I think this line is still worthy of A tier? Yes.